Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much how I went. Um, got the UDC, played that year. Like I said, transferred to Georgetown and, and couldn't ask for a better experience. Did they, were you told you were going to play? Did they, did they, were they, did they, did they compliment your game in a way that you, they thought you fitted Georgetown? Because I'm asking because you wore number 22. Right. I just assumed they brought you in to play defense. <laughs> honestly, I mean, I'm not sure why. I mean, when I first got there, honestly, because I read your questions, like, what brought you to Georgetown and how, you know, what was your goals? I think each person that went to Georgetown, the ultimate goal was playing the league. Because you're talking about the top players, you know, from their state. Um, you talk about the top players in the country. You know, I mean, since I was there, you, you figure we had two or three national player of the years. Anthony Tucker, Alonzo Mourning, um, Reggie Williams. Um, you figure that's everyone's ultimate goal, to play in the league, and that was my goal. So when I first got there, honestly, Reggie... Last year was my first year at Georgetown, and I used to come at Rick Reggie every day. Um, that's what broke my wrist. We still laugh by that to this day. But my goal was to play in the league and, and have a career. And that's why I, I don't understand why a lot of pro athletes allow people who don't play in the league to tell them about their life and, and, and what they should and how they should be perceived. If you made it to the top of your profession, if I was a lawyer and, I, and I'm, you know, litigating a case in front of the Supreme Court, that's something that should be celebrated. If I'm an athlete that went through, you know, playing Little League, um, playing all these different AAU, you know, circuits and everything else, high school ball, college ball, and making it to pros, that says a lot. Like you said, with Milton playing, you know, transferring, going from one team to another team, getting 30, you know, playing with people that, that put that's dedicating their life to this. This is not somebody that goes on the park and you know just go up and throw up some shots. These are people that are sitting there feeding their families with this profession. And for people to go and be like, "Oh, you're just a basketball player," no, you're more than that. You're the top of your profession. You know, I happened to go out with Alonzo one night, and um, we was talking because I teach, and he was like, "Man, I, you know, I appreciate you a teacher and everything else." And I'm like, "Yeah, I hear that, but I want to be where you are." I, I don't want to go, I want a car to take out a loan. I want to go, bam, you know, and live that lifestyle. That's my dream. And he's at the top, you know, Hall of Famer. Um, he's able to take care of not only his, you know, kids, but his kids, kids, kids. And to me, that's the ultimate goal and ultimate um, compliment as far as success of your career. If you can do that, I mean, how can anybody tell you differently? You know, that's 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 something that was... Uh, Got a little static. Mm-hmm. You touched on something that was cool. Because um, when I think about Milton Bell, mm-hmm. McDonald's All-American. Right. Um, you come into a program where, you know, that's where he belongs. I mean, you look at right. McDonald's All-Americans, you know, that, mm-hmm. Milton Bell's on that list. Um, Correct. What was it like for you coming into that scenario with already having Georgetown DNA, so to speak, and then if you can touch on what Johnny talked about, how you transferred that into a successful pro career. And especially that story <clears> you shared about your son at the airport and Johnny picking him up. Just right. you know, the bond that you, you two share, if you could touch on that as well. Sure. Uh, it, um, it's simple. <clears throat> um, it's very simple for me. Uh, without uh, mentors like Johnny Jones and uh, Kemet, um, Sam Jefferson, uh, you as well, Gene, uh, you and Patrick, you and you guys, um, I grew up, um, I think it's fair to say that every um, African-American young man in the United States, um, and even the parents, your parents uh, wanted you to uh, be blessed enough to play for John Thompson. And I think the bar that you guys set for um, us guys that followed, it was, it was like a factory. It was a basketball factory. Uh, and it produced um, not only pro basketball players, but it produced educated African-American men. And um, I think, um, thinking back, um, thinking about what my mom used to always say, uh, my mom was a huge fan of John Thompson, the man, way before I was offered a scholarship. And so um, I hear a lot of the players, I heard Allen Iverson and some of the other guys say, 
um, Coach Thompson really saved their lives. And I'm um, in agreement with that um, 100% because for me, um, like you said, I had family that actually went to Georgetown uh, before, um, I think it was 83, 84. uh, um, They received their doctorate from Georgetown. They went and got their master's. And so from an educational standpoint, my mother really uh, pushed me um, to be like uh, my family. And being at Georgetown was so close. And for what Coach stood for, um, giving a black man, and as we all know today, um, an African-American man with an education is powerful. Um, that goes without saying. Uh, even more so today, you look at the things that are going on in um, society, in the streets, especially mm-hmm. here in Richmond, Virginia. We have protests almost every night. So it was um, truly a blessing. Um, I don't think that I realized that when I was 18, 17, 18, 19 years old. But um, I turned 50 this year, and the older that I've gotten. And uh, you really get a chance to talk to guys like my mentors, Johnny and Sam and um, Mark Tillman as well. And uh, you see that we are a um, a brotherhood, and it's a fraternity, but it's a fraternity that was started um, by you guys. You guys, I think Coach um, um, has been at Georgetown or was at Georgetown from early on, and um, every time that we were there, um, as freshmen, we would come in, and guys like Michael Jackson, Patrick, um, Sleepy Floyd, guys like yourself, you guys always came in with positive energy, always trying to encourage us. And so it's it's so often that I see the alumni come to the games or they come to the practices, and they automatically challenge the newer kids, right, saying that you have to be like us or you have to do things this way or um, you guys are not playing as hard as we did. And so to kind of answer your question, we had great role models. Um, we had great um, role models in you guys that came before us, um, guys like myself. Um, I had great role models in Charles Smith, Jonathan Edwards, um, Anthony Allen, Johnny Jones, Sam Jefferson, those guys that showed me, hey, man, this is how this is done. And so when you see that something is so successful as the Georgetown basketball program, uh, you just got to fall in line and do your part. Um, that's all you have to do. Nothing extra, uh, nothing more, nothing less. You just got to do your part to make it and I think to leave it in the condition that it was when you found it. And uh, I'm just blessed. Like I said, every day um, I talk to someone, whether it be on the phone or on a podcast, and someone always brings up Coach Thompson or Georgetown basketball. And so over the years I have uh, just um, – been overwhelmed with the blessing because I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, I think we all will agree that when you're young, you're just having fun and doing something that you love. And not until you get older do you figure out what you actually did, um, if that makes any sense, what I'm saying. Makes makes perfect sense. And it further illustrates to me, and I'm not going to let you off the hook, by the way, on that pro career. We're going to get back to that. (laughs) Okay. Um, Because, you know, 50 is 50. I don't care where you at. 50 is 50. Right. right. Um, But I couldn't think of two gentlemen that that illustrate more um, what the program is about. And and that's you only you spent two years, two years there. Milton. Right. And Johnny, you did you did graduate. So it's almost like you two. But you left and you didn't finish your graduate. Right. And I'm saying all this to say your, your your family. Right. We, 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 you, we balled the McDonald. We bled blue and gray. Um, you were on some incredible teams. Um, you know, the Princeton game, like uh, Princeton game changed the whole final four, the whole March Madness. Yeah. You guys were part of that. And then just to let you know, and Johnny, you're off the hook, but I watched the Xavier game this morning and I'm still trying to figure out what happened. <laughs> So, Milton, can you let me know what happened to the Xavier? I'm still not over the Xavier game. Um, I'm trying to remember <laughs> back. Let's see, Jones, I don't think um, – I maybe had transferred. Don't quote me, but I think um, – Had you I, transferred by then? Um, I think I had transferred. Um, I think Johnny knows guys. Um, was that after I left? I think Johnny um, maybe um, – was Churchwell there? Um, I know Zoe and Matumbo was there. Zoe and Matumbo, <laughs> Tillman, David Edwards, uh, Brian – Tillman was a senior. Tillman was a senior. Right. Yeah. 
Uh, maybe I was there. Um, you have to uh, forgive my mind. Like if, I said, you just if you sit. blocked it out, it's okay. Because I'm trying to block it out. Well, okay. uh, you know, I didn't want to say it, but it was, I mean, you know, it was tough. We didn't lose a lot. Um, we didn't, didn't lose a lot. I um, didn't lose a lot, and it wasn't something that we were um, accustomed to, um, to be honest. We didn't plan to lose. Um, I think it's one of those things that going back to um, Coach Thompson used to always say, and I still remember this to this day, he would say before the games, he says that if he were or if someone were to take a Georgetown jersey and open the door of the opposing team and throw that jersey in the locker room, that team would be mortified, right? So they were already fearful of having to play us, but it was his way of letting us know, I think, the level of fear that teams had and Hey, because they knew that we were well prepared, well coached, and that the talent that we had was um, second to none. So it's one of those things that uh, it's, uh, you know, you try to block out the bad moments like the losses. Um, I think um, going <laughs> well, back. Or, or you embrace them to move forward. Or you embrace um, them to move forward, yeah. So, yeah. so, so Johnny, for you, um, did you when did you feel like you, you had established your role or what it was going to be on the team? Um, because – I hear the stories I hear about you is that like Johnny's not the only one that thought he should have played pro. So I, you had a great game your sophomore year, 14 points out the, out the box. So it was like, did you, did you find your rhythm and you just realized my contribution is going to be on the white team or when did you figure out your role for the crew? I don't think you ever figure out your role because your like role I said before. The team, yeah. Right. I think that you, you're constantly trying to get on that blue team. Um, let me say this first, because I think some people are, are, are left out of the conversation of Thompson Legacy. Awesome. Hey, one of the person that um, that I feel is left out is his ex-wife, uh, Miss Thompson. Um, she was one of the first person to help me get a job once I you know left Georgetown. Wow. Um, Ronnie, I mean... When Mill says that there's people that help you through the transition, Ron is one of the people that helped me through that transition um, of not playing and everything because it was tough. I don't think every, anyone ever goes to Georgetown and feel like, I want to be a bench player. I want to sit on this bench. You know, I want to play. Speak, hey, speak for yourself, John. He told me from my, my recruiting pitch was, I'm bringing you here to be a practice player. Hmm. Yeah, you know he didn't. He didn't realize. I'm from DC. You tell somebody from DC that we're gonna take that as a challenge. Yeah. Correct. But, and my but, thing is that, like I said before, your, your role is pretty much given to you by the coach. That's who makes the decisions. Uh, you may not agree with that decision. And, and like I said before, it ain't like I'm sitting there like, okay. But you do come to a, a, a at peace moment. I'm in my at peace moment because I'm like stressing out because you want to get on the floor. Yeah, pal, honestly, it won't be a real here. You gotta be real. It's a locker room. It's a locker room. <laughs> we lost a couple of games, so we can make some changes. Like, okay, we need. I need to get in there, man. You know. Um, Did you voice uh, those changes to anyone? Oh yeah, there was no. No, <laughs> we went out just saying we was going to practice. You know, we we double to everybody from the kid day to kind day. Everybody, everybody, everybody got to get it. You know, everybody. we was in practice. It was like. That was our only time to vent any frustration out. Right. Um, and again, it wasn't like I was going there saying, you know, I'm going to be on the bench. I want to stay on the bench or anything like it's that. Kind of right. Right. Yeah. Um, but you do come to a realization that, you know, certain players are going to play. Um, and it is what it is. But Milton, Ronnie, and like I said before, the people that I think when I've been hearing all these, um, you know, people talking about the legacy and everything else, I do think that she needs to get, you know, a round of applause for her contribution to the program. Miss Mary Finland, you're um, talking about stories. The first time I ever called Miss Finland, uh, I remember sitting on the bed. Smitty was, I mean, Charles Smith was across from me. And when they say, you know, call and share what you did in class, my thing is, okay, well, you know, I went to class, no, nothing big. <laughs> yeah, she would start asking me questions. I'm like, okay, well, I don't know that. Man, this lady cussed me out for 30 to 40 minutes. Like, what the? I'm like, on the phone, that's any like, what's going on with this? Nobody <laughs> told you? No. See, <laughs> Andrew Allen, Sam, all the room. They had all their notes all spread out, doing all this advice. I'm, you know, I'm there with 
I'm a classmate. I was in there with Reggie, Ronnie Um Highsmith, and Charles Smith. Wow. So I'm sitting there, you know, I call Miss Fellin. Hey, how you know Miss Fellin? Say, okay, you know. Tell what you did. I'm like, okay, I went to the class and I had this this period, you know, this hour or whatever, it was okay. Well, what about this? I'm like, I don't know. Like, what you mean, what about this? <laughs> Man, that lady went crazy. <laughs> that next day, you would have swore I took every note, wrote down every word professor said, everything spread out. Contribution to to the program goes without saying. Um, and the add on when people say to save their life, I wouldn't say in my life. I would say he enriched my life. He made it a lot. He helped me understand things that, and like in this area and now with all the you know digital un- unrest and everything, I have a clear understanding based on my experience. I Same amount of minutes, <laughs> and we will all be playing everything else. It goes a lot with that. You understand that life is not fair. You understand that there are inequalities and everything else, and you got to voice yourself. Uh, one of the questions is that you ask, do we feel like you don't sit yourself? You know, when you're young, you just, you know, you play basketball and everything else. And like I said, I've been watching your podcast. And one of the things that Sleepy said that he do, he would go and network, like when he go to different areas and stuff. You know, that's not something that we thought about while we was there. You know, we go into school with people that become congressmen, senators, you know, mm-hmm. on businesses and stuff. Like we wasn't networking with those people at at our time there. You know, setting ourselves up for when we leave. And I think that's one of the things that I, I regret most is not taking advantage of being at an institution like Georgetown and taking advantage of those connections. So that's, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. You said that because I, I, I can I can I salute you and I agree with you in terms of Miss Finland, Gwen Thompson, the Thompson family. Um, and I, I, again, I, I think that just speaks to when you see Alonzo send his son there, when you see Reggie send his son there. And we know, you know, those are not easy scenarios. I mean, it wasn't easy for JT3 to coach at Georgetown with his dad there. Right. right. I mean, yeah. the, the, the hilltop with the diversity being what it is. Just think when I was there, the diversity was less. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. it, it, I think the campus now is anywhere between 7 to 10%, maybe as high as 13% black. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but again, and again, no, I, I think the number actually may be lower. Mm-hmm. But the point I'm trying to make is that, that was an adjustment period for all of us. Right. right? And that still probably exists to some degree today. Right. Um, yeah. What Thompson, I think, did for all of us, and the reason why I wanted to have you guys on is we have more in common than, than, than just the fact that we had the jersey on the front of our chest. Like, we had to figure out how to contribute with not being on the court. Right. And, you know, navigating that is not always easy. But, again, both your names always came up with – how you kept the team together. You, you, you kept it, you kept levity, right? You, you, if it was a pressure situation, you guys always were able to, to, to break the pressure. And off the court, you galvanized a lot. Like you, a lot of people gathered around you. And, you know, again, I, I, I just think that's important. And I wanted to celebrate you guys for that. Um, so, I, I, you know, again, Thompson's imprint on us is, without a doubt, is indelible. Um, yeah. But I think we are each unique individuals in our own right, and that's why this Hoy locker room to me is a is a platform for us to just share that. Milton, you want to jump in on anything there? Sure, man. Um, to piggyback off what Johnny said, <clears throat> um, I often um, he and I talk, and I often uh, wish I had been more um, outgoing, and um, I pretty much hung around uh, Johnny and. Uh, my teammates on a daily basis. But I'm um, looking back on it from a networking standpoint. Um, Johnny has a, a great point in uh, maybe we didn't take advantage of um, everything that was offered to us at Georgetown. Because if you look at it, uh, Georgetown University, of course, is in the nation's capital. Um, 
huge uh, basketball uh, following, but from an educational standpoint, um, when you look at some of the top lawyers and and uh, top professions of today, um, they're graduates of Georgetown. And so um, it would have been nice, of course, we had friends or I had friends that were in some classes of mine and had, had uh, friends who were uh, going in other directions, uh, were focused on their education um, as well. And so um, it would have been a great honor to maybe had a chance to support them the way they supported us. Um, all of our friends in our classes, they always came to games. And so I'm um, looking back on it and at 50 years old um, to say, hey, um, I wish we could have supported the student body um, as much as they supported us because um, as we all know, they were there, man. They were loyal, um, win, lose, or draw. Uh, they were loyal. They were there. And believe it or not, when I follow some of these blogs and follow Eugene, um, they're still supportive. They're still there. Uh, you see people from um, Georgetown class of 61 or Georgetown class of 71. And so these people are part of our family. Um, and it just makes me uh, wish that I had been more outgoing as a young person. Uh, but I'm from, um, I went to John Marshall High School in the mm -hmm. inner city of Richmond, Virginia. Uh, Virginia, as we all know, is the capital of the South. And so <clears throat> um, I heard. Um, also heard Johnny touch on, and you as well, Gene, touched on the diversity that was at Georgetown when I got there. So for me, coming from an inner city, um, um, to put it uh, mildly, um, as the young people say, um, I'm from the bricks. Um, you don't get more inner city of Richmond, Virginia, where I went. From the concrete. Concrete. And so um, we probably had in my senior class, um, to be honest, um, I don't think we had any um, Caucasian students. And so um, I graduated in May uh, from from John Marshall. By the end of May, I was on campus. And so you're mm. talking about total culture shock for a young man like me, 17 years old. I'm not really having the, the wherewithal to... I'm um, going to kind of open your mind and open your mouth and speak to people, especially people of different races. And so um, just being around um, guys like Johnny and Mark and um, Alonzo Morning as well, who's from Virginia. We played um, AAU together. Um, I'm sure his situation um, dealing with um, diversity was similar to mine. But I think it's one of those things that when you see guys or me, like when I had a chance to see how Johnny Jones carried yeah, himself. McDonald's All-American together, too, as well, right? Right, exactly. We played McDonald's All-American um, together. So um, for me, that was um, that was a great thing to have someone that you come in with that you knew from um, two years before. We started playing uh, Boo Williams um, um, AAU um, during our 11th grade year. So we had known each other two years before. And then to come in. Um, together, um, um, to me, really was a blessing. Um, it really was a blessing. Uh, let's see. Um, really was can a blessing. Can you hear me, Johnny? Can you hear me? And can you guys hear me now? Here. Okay. Um, it's like breaking up, like you said. Yes. Okay. I was uh, just saying that it was uh, just I'm um, looking back and wishing that I had been more, um, or maybe had been exposed a little more to more diversity, um, I think would have helped my situation and, and helped me to be more open to yeah. saying, hi, I'm Milton Bell from Richmond, Virginia. How are you? Whereas I was a little focused, maybe a little bit too focused. I'm sure. Did, um, did you have, up, did you guys have upper bound? Did you have that program upper bound when you were there? Like the, the pro the summer program where they brought in the freshmen, right? Um, I had freshman you orientation, had the upper bound and that really, um, I actually met my, uh, my classmates before I had a chance to meet my teammates, believe it or not, um, mm -hmm. because as a freshman, um, I think we were in uh, maybe Healy dorm uh, right in the circle. And so um, it opened me up. Some of my friends that I did have from that upper bound program that you're speaking of, Gene, are still friends of mine today, eh, believe it or not. And so that was my introduction to the life at Georgetown, if you will. But, and the reason why I'm glad you expounded on that, because what I hope is, you know, people from alumni services, people from the university 
or peep in the podcast and just thinking about ways that we can connect the dots, ways that, um, because now it's 2020, um, everybody should be talking to everybody. Uh, we're, we're basically in a virtual world now. So it's a lot easier to connect, maybe more impersonal, but it's a lot easier to connect. So in terms of talking to student athletes differently um, and, and sharing that with the entire university. So providing opportunities while you're there to network and get to meet people. So then once you leave, you've already established those relationships, that rapport. Yeah, and it's right. never, guys, it's never too late. Right. Um, I hope that some of your classmates who you have gotten about this still remember you might see you on this podcast and, and you know, you might, you might get something, you might get a DM. Right. That's why Johnny, you have to get on social media, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, so you, you touched on something because as you was talking, I was sitting there thinking like, why wasn't it done a lot more when we was in school? But the climate was a lot different back then. Mm -hmm. um, the difference is, is that a lot of times you didn't want boosters or different people within your program because of the influence that they may have, you know, the legal aspect of it of giving them money and different things like that. So that was kind of separate. Um, Hoya kind of, paranoia. Right. right. So the kind of um, changes that I think, I'm not sure what's the climate today with all the changes going on, but I think that that bridge can be, we can be brought together and these kids can benefit by being at an institution like Georgetown as far as, like I look at Duke and I look at all the players that are on TV, you know, doing the, the telecast and everything else. There has to be some networking going on into that. You know, different Duke players that are getting jobs and coaching and um, you got the guy in Philadelphia who's the, in charge of personnel and everything. So that, that goes with networking. And like they said, Steve Nash got the job. Why? Because he's good friend. He knows the... Um, he knows the guy who owns the, I guess, the Nets or whoever, mm -hmm. you know. And if these players are able to, like you said, interact a little bit more with the student body and with the different people that owns these companies, I think it will make a huge difference um, yeah. for when they graduate and everything else. One of the reasons why I was joking with you last night when I said, thanks, coach, you know, for giving this playing time is that we normally don't get this opportunity. You know, you're going to hear about the Lonzo, and I can understand why it's business. You want people to come and watch, and you're going to have the Lonzo's, the Ken Bates, and everything else. So we rarely get this opportunity to voice our opinion and and to say what's on our mind and everything. And I really appreciate you giving us that. Um, I'm really grateful for that to have this opportunity because we don't get it. It's like you know, you sitting on the end of, you sitting at the bench, and also you say, "Go." Go in there, Johnny. You know, you're like, oh, shit. You know. Well, like, what I understand, you know, Johnny, you go in there jacking up shots. You, you want to get buckets. <laughs> I, mean, you know, I mean, I might not get a time again, you know. I remember, like, we played against Syracuse in the, in the um, Big East Championship game. He gave me a sweet pass. I just got the best, like, best, like 20 seconds. So I went up the dump, missed it. So I'm in the elevator with Coach Riley. Coach Riley, like, why would you do that? You know, you just got, I said, I might never get no chance like that again. <laughs> 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 I like, you lost your mind, so what I miss? <laughs> this is my sports center moment. You bugging. <laughs> like, Home team that, sports, like, right? For real, you asked me that? <laughs> wow. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, like I said, it, it's important to me. Um, uh, and it, it was just a matter of time. Uh, like I said, your names always come up. Some of the stories um, we can only share in the locker room off the air, you know, because that's, but I'm just letting you know. I know. <laughs> I know you two are trouble. I know you two are trouble. Um, Milton, can you uh, t talk to us a little bit about your, your basketball school? Uh, what you got going on down there, and if because um, I'm always thinking of ways that we can connect amongst ourselves, mm -hmm. and I, I don't think we should be shy um, um, about reaching out to each other, right. Um, right. because no ain't never killed nobody. Right. No. Um, I got I got a friend who uh, who tells me that all the time. Mark Tillman tells me that all the time. Yeah. No ain't never killed nobody, but the man is getting robbed. I think mm. that's that's I think that's the saying. Right. So yeah. we should do more of this on our own. And, and to to a point you made, Johnny, 
it's 2020. If the school is not encouraging you to network and providing you with resources, if the program is not encouraging you and providing you with resources, Gene Smith, Johnny Jones, Milton Bell, former Hoyas, we're encouraging you to do it while you're there. Because I share with you the same sentiments. I, I, I didn't network while I was there. I, I was too busy. My freshman and sophomore year, I thought I was going to flunk, flunk out. Right. Right. I mean, I was, you know, it, it, was, it was a huge adjustment. Right. But right. through watching Smitty, Eric Smith, and Briggs, who you both know very well, right. um, Eric Floyd, you, right. you look to the seniors, and we had a cat. We, 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 there's always one smart guy on the team, Milton, like a Johnny. Right. So we had a Ron Blaylock. Right, Ron Blaylock. So, you know, you find people – in the program to emulate that are successful you're watching them be successful so all you have to do is follow that program right. now right. you're going to do it differently but there's a program there for you to follow right. um johnny it's impressive that you're still working with kids and you're still teaching and learning and giving back i think that's huge um i hope you both reach out to to catch you ball with to touch base so maybe we can connect right. on things that we're all doing with uh, our current endeavors. Right, right. Um, but for one, for two minutes to three minutes, Milton, give me Argentin- Argent- Argentina mm-hmm. and Iceland. Your mm-hmm. ball, I, I got to hear, hear some stories because okay. you balled out. <laughs> well, I was blessed, Gene. Uh, you know, I was blessed, like all of us here, uh, to be taught basketball the right way. Um, I was blessed. Uh, to be taught basketball the right way um, by Coach Thompson, Coach Riley, um, Mrs. Finland, how to um, educate yourself. And I think um, not only were we blessed to be able to be taught how to play the game of basketball the correct way, I think we were also blessed to be taught how to carry yourself as an African-American man in society. Um, Doesn't matter whether... Um, whether you're in the United States or you're overseas, you still have to carry yourself a certain way. And um, I remember um, Coach um, always instilling, and the first thing that he instilled in me was we had to come to the games dressed appropriately because if you came dressed appropriately, you would be taken serious. I mean, if you came with a do-rag on or you came with your pants sagging or you came with your tennis shoes unsigned, uh, um, unlaced. That wasn't an option. <laughs> wasn't an option. But um, those things that I learned um, from Coach Thompson and from Johnny Jones and Mark Tillman and those guys, how to carry yourself off of the court. Um, it's funny. Uh, we have our own consulting um, um, company where we – uh, we were blessed to have 10 players signed in Argentina um, last year. And it's just, um, it's very simple. Um, it's friends of mine that I've played with or played against or played for um, that call me for players now. And um, those same messages that I was given, that we all were given, um, I try to share those messages and try to um, explain to um, my guys, because the majority are African-American young men, that you're going to be judged on who you are and what you do, maybe even more so than how you play. So let's say, for example, if you get 50 a night, um, let me see, did I lose you guys? Um, you guys still here? Did I lose you guys? Have they ever played in the Argentinian league? <laughs> you know, the man said, "Come on now, man. You are the top five players that ever played in the Argentinian league." Thank you, Johnny. Well, thank I appreciate you. it, man. Um, I really appreciate. It. It's humbling. It's humbling to be. I mean, I was, I was look. Hey, Johnny, I was looking through my notes because I got stats here on this dude. And I'm like, he gonna give me something. <laughs> he gonna give me a story. Right. He played in the same season against the same team and gave him thirty both times. Like I'm like, dude. <laughs> well, um, I gotta say, Gene. Um, I gotta say, um, when I arrived on Georgetown's campus for my upper bound program, right? Um, when I set foot 
in the Kenner League for the first time. You're talking about a country kid from Richmond, Virginia. Everyone that was on my team, right, to me, was already a pro. Because you take someone like a, a Johnny Jones, who's 6'8", uh, 215 pounds, runs fast, jumps high. Um, I played center my senior year at John Marshall. I played center. So from... John, he ain't going to give us nothing. He ain't going to give us nothing, <laughs> <laughs> But I'm just saying... We all let bro. <laughs> well, the correlation that I'm making is that I learned. I was able to learn. You got two of the greatest shot blockers in the history of basketball. Yeah, it's a blessing because I was able to be around it. Uh, um, you know, when you're around pro pro basketball players, and um, to me, um, everyone that, um, like Johnny said, um, everyone. Um, kind of like Johnny said, everyone that went to Georgetown uh, had the aspirations of playing pro basketball. And it was um, just one of those things that I um, I look back on and feel very fortunate that I had um, that type of talent in the court, on the court with me. Honestly, I, like we had a conversation before we talked if I told you, you know, straight up, where, because I, you know, I was told about scoping them. So I mean, you know, that people can see what we saw in practice all the time. But if he was given the opportunity, that's what he could give. The biggest thing, as far as, I guess, playing every time when you ask questions about playing, is confidence. You know you have Thompson's confidence. You are not a starter. You're not sure about that. You get mistakes because you not know if you're gonna get pulled. Things like that when he, and, and that he had. And like you said, he was a McDonald's All American. And not know how uh, the people that was on that team a lot of the morning. Don Kimball's on the West yeah. Right. Um, Bill Owens. All these different that's the all American team that he was on. And people forget that. That when he came there, he was, when I look at the stats of him blocking shots in high school, he blocked shots at the same level that Alonzo was blocking shots. Right. So I'm like, God, who is this kid coming in? Because Thompson told us about, you know, we got these coaches coming in. That's you know, he did that to us too. <laughs> <laughs> we got these horses coming in and da 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 So I'm like, okay. So, you know, you see Alonzo and everything else. So the first time I actually seen Milton play was, let me see if I can remember. It may have been Kennelly. May have been Kennelly. But the first time I really seen him, like, go after people was in practice. And like I said, we had this thing from Kyrie to Kim, but we give you. We give it to him. Give it to him. Like, he said, like, Thompson always said, we are three men away from a championship. I'm thinking to myself, God, there you go right there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Will was a beast. And like I said before, he's not giving you, like I said, I read the article where he was one of the five, I think he's one of the five best players to ever play in Argentina. And um, I'm like, that's incredible. That's it's incredible to me. Well, if I could piggyback, that, Gene. That, that, that jersey, that, Argent, that Argentinian jer- jersey should be in McDonough. Oh, wow. Hey, man, that's a that's blessing. The, that, um, thank you so much, that's, man. That's a because huge. Because this is, this is where we're at now in terms of celebrating each other. That's and, huge. Johnny, thank you so much for telling the stories because he wasn't going to tell them. Now, tell me about this dunk on Olden Polonies. That was some of the best runs ever. That's what I loved about Georgetown was the summertime when the right. pros came back. And to yeah. me, that's where you can get some playing time for the next season. Right. Right. Definitely. Um, I would say this. That, that's one of the best things about going to Georgetown during the time that we went there. You know, you had the older Polonies come in. I remember Xavier McDaniels in there lifting weights, you know, and playing. Um, Muggsy Bowles and, and even just the players that we had. Like I said, you know, be able to go every day and practice against Reggie Williams. 
And one of the players that I don't think get the credit that he deserves as being a Georgetown great is Charles Smith. Yeah. Um, yeah. The bull was a beast. Yeah. He went head to head with Chris Jackson, you know, I, in that LSU game back and forth. And I remember the reporters asking him, what do you think about Chris Jackson? He's like, you need to ask him, what do you think about me? Right. You know, the bull was a beast. And and it's funny because I've seen like little snippets of Allen Iverson on on the Up and Smoke podcast. Mm-hmm. And I would say this because he said, you know, when people think of Georgetown, they think of him. No. I think at a, a younger generation, but the overall history of Georgetown, um, I'm not going to lie to you. I, 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 I said on the last podcast, I didn't know anything about Georgetown. You know, you saw the George, you figured Georgia or something. I figured it was in Georgia somewhere. Um <laughs> Patrick Ewing's, you know, stepped out and, and pretty much put the put the George uh, at the national level. Mm-hmm. Then you figure that when this man came out, they created a lottery. The other thing that he said as far as Thompson coaching guards, Smitty's a, was, like I said before, Biggie's player of the year. He brought Smitty in to be a defensive specialist. That's your right. name. Right. Correct. So I think Allen Iverson is, probably, is the most popular at this particular junction as far as the, the, the kids who are growing up now. Um, I guess it was like like I always tell people like me and my brother we always discuss who's the greatest basketball player ever which I don't believe that there's that, such a thing but you know people will say you know Jordan and everything else yeah because that's what you grew up seeing you saw everything that he did right. it's like with, you, know, you wouldn't know that he was a top five in the history of Argentina Argentina unless you watched them play but here it is if you was able to see his clips and see the different things that he did then we a whole different, you know, aspect of who he is. And here it is, Michael Jordan, yeah, great. But you never saw a Will Chamberlain score average 50 points for a season. You know, you never saw um, Oscar Robinson average a triple-double. So to sit there and say, okay, this is this based on a limited amount of knowledge that you have is sorely mistaken. Alan Iverson is what, and, and I still don't understand why we don't bring, as far as recruiting this stuff is concerned, and, and putting our image out there. Alan Iverson, Reggie Williams, Charles Smith, Eric Floyd, and all these different players. Because what brought us to Georgetown was y'all. We didn't go to Georgetown for, you know, like I said, I didn't know the academic part of Georgetown. When people pick a school, after they pick the school, based on the program. That makes sense. If I go to Northwestern, I'm interested in being a sportscaster. Right. You know, right. writing and stuff. That particular program is bringing me to Northwestern. So I'm an athlete. I'm doing things to better my career. Where can I further my career in this particular sport? Georgetown was it because we saw y'all. We saw, you know, I still remember that game of the century against Ralph Samson. Mm. You know, <clears throat> I all that the, the hype was better than the game. <laughs> the hype was crazy. I found um, you know, you boy. And I don't say it, man. We heard stories about you know y'all defensive pilots on the court. So I, you would never get up against a Gene Smith player like oh, man. <laughs> you know. I, I mean, me personally. I would never forget my experience at Georgetown. And I would say it's 50-50. 50% of the players that, you know, my teammates and everyone that I enjoy playing with, and 50% Thompson and the staff. You know, you can't go without remembering, like, he's a piss of all. Like, I still remember running, and you sit in that chair and just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, worse. Oh, yeah, yeah, worse. Really, get your ass up and do something. Like, <laughs> like damn. You know, he was, I would never, like, like I said, basketball-wise, nah, I like the experience because you know I wasn't playing. Right. I didn't want to play. Um, but as far as my teammates and friends, like I said, Ronnie Thompson, woo, got me through a lot of tough situations at school, and that was his son, you know. Um, Mark Tillman. Um, for those, I'm, I'm going to say Timmy. But for those who don't know who Kimmy is, it's Sam Jefferson, because you said I never say his name. Right. right. Um, Alonzo Morning, um, Mark Tillman, Dwayne Bryant, Smitty. Like I said, oh, man, Ronnie Tom, I mean, uh, Ronnie Highsmith. Right. When I first got to Georgetown, man, like, it was not, it wasn't hard for me to do, to be that with Milton, because that's how Ronnie was with me. 
you know, I had no no idea how to be um how to navigate through that system. It wasn't for Ronnie, I'd have been out of there. Quick. It wasn't it wasn't meant to be, fam. It wasn't meant to be. You you were meant to get through how you got through your journey. Uh you clearly uh making the most of that journey and you're giving back in your own way. Um, Milton, we're going to close with you because we're, we're going over an hour and it's on a Sunday. And I want to thank you both for, for giving me this time. Uh, it's not going to be, it's not going to be the last time. The next time I come on with Milton, I'm going to have me some video. Okay. I'm not even going to need him. I'm going to find, I'm going to find me some video somewhere. All right. Gotta do, man. All right. But, but Milton, I, I, I had the opportunity to listen to you and Johnny on the podcast back in February, your podcast. Mm-hmm. And I, I really, um, I like the way you uh, speak, I like the way you break things down. So if you could just give us some final remarks as we sure. uh, take it home. I, um, I, really I have to put this that. disclaimer out there, Gene. Um, I have to put this out there that um, whatever country that I've been to and, and played and guys that I played against, um, none of those guys, right, were on the level of my teammates at Georgetown. So, and it's the only thing that I have to go by because um, I played um, two years at Georgetown and I actually came out, um, I entered my name in the draft with two years left to play. So the only um, example that I have of college basketball is Georgetown. And so I'm not being funny, but um, pro basketball, if you will, was kind of like a letdown because I was used to so much competition. Um, I was used to pros coming back, like you said, guys coming back in, in the summertime. And it's just the older that I get, I'm able to, um, I heard you mention my basketball school and what I try to instill um, in my kids is just what I learned from Coach Thompson. So it's just me trying to pass on the wisdom that I received from a great man, um, pass on wisdom that I've received from OGs um, like yourself, Johnny Jones, and just trying to make sure that um, I can help create the next wave of good people and pro basketball players. And I think that's what we all strive for. It's funny, um, I heard Johnny mention it, but um, when I talk to my own students or um, I talk to my own pro players, I find myself going back to something that Coach Thompson instilled in me. And so uh, it's just my way of giving back. I was blessed to have learned from a legend, and it's what I owe the next generation is to pass on the wisdom that I received um, from my experiences, um, from my pro experiences. But um, kind of like we all know, it's, it's, it's not easy being an African-American man um, in our own country. Um, let alone in another country. And so um, I think, yes, um, I hear Johnny talk about his students and um, he teaches and teaches his students. Um, I think it's up to us to kind of give them, yes, the basketball part, but basketball, um, you can only play until you so old. Pro basketball, I was blessed to play until I was 40 years old, but you have to figure out what you want kids to do once they can't play anymore. And everyone's not going to have a chance to go to Georgetown University or you're not going to have a chance to play pro basketball. But what you can be is a productive person in society and you can be a role model. And um, I think it's up to us to carry on um, those of us that um, were blessed to be under his tutelage to carry on his message and his wisdom and to make sure that we leave this place in a better um, situation than when we, um, than when we came. And it's, it's a blessing to have guys, um, that I look up to, um, even to this day, like both of you guys and, and just trying to push forward and do my part. Um, I think that if we can do our part to push, um, the next generation to be great, um, I think coach will be happy with each person that he has instilled wisdom in. Um, I'm hoping, and it's funny. Um, I haven't seen him in about four years I um, went up to Georgetown to take my son to meet him and I still try to live up to those standards that he instilled in me at 17 years old so it's something that uh, that I don't think you ever when you are um, influenced by someone of that magnitude I don't think you ever stop trying to live up to those standards and try to be the best you can because that's what was taught to us at a very young age and so I'm just blessed man Um, I keep using that word blessed I think 50 years old to make it to 50 is a blessing 
for an inner city guy like myself, right? Um, truly a blessing. Um, uh, any color, race, uh, you know, whatever color you are, um, to make it to 50 is a blessing. So it just um, inspires me talking to guys like yourselves, um, inspires me um, to do more, and it lets me know that I have to do more and that the job's not done, my brother. Thank you. It could not have been been said more eloquently. Um, Johnny, I, I, I definitely want to give a shout out to your dad. Anybody that drops 85 points, uh, you know, that, those right. are big shoes to fill, but you you, 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 you you did it your way, fam. You did it your way. Uh, I want to thank you both. Uh, Hoy and Lock. Thank you, Stansbury. What's that? Stansbury? Thanks. Yeah, Got to say thanks to Markham Stansbury, the legend. Markham Stansbury, my illustrious producer who wants to stay <laughs> out of it, but Markham Stansbury, thank you for helping me. And I, and I got to give us a shout out to my graphics art person that does my flyers. I know you guys love my flyer. I know you love Incredible. Me. Yeah. Tanisha Incredible. Best, T Best 25. But thank you both, man. Hoya Locker Room done. Salute to you both. Salute. Don't be strangers. Call up your ex teammates, even if they don't call Salute. you. We'll do it. Be in touch, fellas. Okay, Thank Gene. You. Thanks, brother. All right. All righty. Be with